Hey there, Andre here from PSD Box. Welcome to a new Photoshop tutorial. Today I want to show you how to edit a portrait and create some snow effects on it. So we're gonna take this picture and turn it into something like this. So I will show you some basic edits and how to create this snow effect on your image. So let's get started. Okay, we will start in Lightroom, so let's go back to Lightroom. This is a virtual copy of uh, this image. So uh, we will start with this image. On my website you will find these images for premium members. You'll have the raw file, and if you're not a premium member you'll find the full resolution JPEG file with this uh, exactly as you can see it here on, on the image. And as I said, we will retouch this a bit in Lightroom. If you don't have Lightroom you can use Camera Raw in Photoshop, so just open this in Camera Raw and um, uh, JPEG files you cannot open them in Camera Raw if you want to do that you have to go to the preferences let me go here where you see file handling here's this button for Camera Raw preferences click that and here on the bottom where it says JPEG and TIFF handling on the where it says JPEG click that and select automatically open uh, all supported JPEGs and that way when you open a JPEG file it will automatically open it with Camera Raw and Camera Raw is just like uh, having Lightroom so you'll have the, exactly the same modules that I have here so let's edit this um, you can see it's underexposed so I'll increase the exposure let's say to about one stop 135 and I want to drop the highlights a bit because the background is a bit too blown out uh, maybe add a bit more light on the shadows I want to decrease the clarity I want to have a soft effect uh, I want to create the base for this uh, snow effect um, I want to have a bit less color on the image and maybe a bit colder so I'll change the temperature a bit and uh, maybe increase a bit the contrast like that and uh, Let's re reduce a bit the noise, just really basic edits to have the base for our image, maybe some vignetting just to focus a bit light on the girl's portrait and that's pretty much it. I don't want to edit this too much, we'll edit this in Photoshop anyways. Uh, let's maybe add a bit more blue on the shadows especially like that and on the highlights a bit of yellow not too much just to bring some tones back on her face and change the balance more a bit towards the blacks okay so this is our edit maybe let's increase a bit this, the exposure to 150 and this is our image what I will do is right click on it now and choose edit in I'll choose Adobe Photoshop CC well, you don't need Photoshop CC you can edit this in Photoshop CS5, CS4, whatever Photoshop version you have. The snow effect can be done in any version of Photoshop. Okay, and the first thing that I want to do next is create a copy by pressing Control Command J. And with this new layer, I'll go to Filter and I want to apply some blur to it and I'll use the Fill Blur. You can use the Gaussian Blur uh, if you don't have Photoshop CS5 or CS6 or if you don't have this new blurring filters that Photoshop comes with you can apply Gaussian Blur just uh, fine there's no problem and I'll use an amount of three, 30 pixels um, the canvas size it's quite big uh, I'll click OK now and I just want to show you that you can see it takes a while for the, fl for the filter to be applied and that's because the image is very big I'll make it smaller now so you can see it's 4000 by 6000. I'll decrease the width to 2000 pixels just because I'll apply the filters a bit quicker. So I have this blurred image and now I'll change the blend mode of this to screen. And you can see what happens. We get this sort of dreamy effect and the image is a lot brighter. So I have to decrease the opacity to let's say 50% or 40. We get more light, soft effect and this sort of dreamy, dreamy effect. Okay, now let's um, create a new layer, fill it with black, and now let's go. And now we have to add some noise, so go to filter, noise, add noise, and add about 
200% uh, and make sure you check the monochromatic and click OK. And now we're going to have to go to the filter gallery, but uh, if it's grayed out, it's because you have to change the mode from 16 bits to 8 bits. Otherwise, the filter gallery will not be available. So go into the filter gallery. And here, the only thing you want to do is use this dry brush. And you can see that if you increase the brush size, you have less of these points. This will be our snowflakes. What happens is that if you use a small amount, like two, you have a lot of points. If you increase that, we have like too little. What I want is to have not too many of them and a bit bigger. So what I will do is duplicate this. So I'll create a new layer, new effects layer, and I'll use the same effect on this layer, but I'll decrease the brush size. Okay, so on the first one, I'll use a brush size of let's say four. And on the second one, I'll use a brush size of let's say five or six. And you can see that now they're a bit more rounded. We have not as many and they're a bit bigger. Seven. Okay, so for the first one, I have four. And for the second one, I have seven. The brush detail and texture have no effect. So you don't have to worry about that. And I'll click OK. Okay, and this is our snow. Uh, well, these are my snowflakes here. If I change the blend mode to screen, you will see that the black background will go away. And the only thing left here are these uh, points here, which as I said, are my snowflakes. I'll create a copy with Control Command J. And what I will do now is make it press Control Command T to load the free transform and make them a bit bigger and move them around. And we have to soften this. So what I will do is go to filter, blur, and I'll apply Gaussian blur. That's okay. And about two pixels is okay this canvas size and uh, maybe about three and click OK. And now I'll duplicate this a couple of times and just move them around and maybe flip horizontally just so that we don't have the same distribution of particles. And now you can also make some of them out of focus um, and create some sort of bokeh effects. I'll reactivate this uh, layer that I just uh, put here on top and I will the reason why I changed the blend mode back to normal is because I want you I want you to see the bokeh effect I'll go inside the filter and choose the blur gallery in order to get this bokeh effect you need to use the fill blur and if you don't have it um, you will not be able to do it okay so and here what you do is if you increase the blur you can see we get less and less visibility but we have this light bokeh slider here which if you move to the right, you will start to see how they start to light up. And we have this bokeh effect. Some of them are more brighter, some of them are not at that bright. You can change the how the light looks like using this light range. The more you go towards the towards the uh, the black, the more of these points are illuminated. More more of these points are illuminated. Okay, so let's leave the range about here. That looks okay to me and maybe a bit bigger not that much and a bit less light just find a balance if you don't activate the the monochrome uh, option when you add the noise you can add you will get some colorful light well bokeh effects i guess and here with the color you can uh, you can change a bit the colors of them but we have them in black and white, which is what we need. I think I like how it looks and I'll click OK now. We'll wait for the filter to be applied and we'll change the blend mode back to screen. And you can see that now we have some bokeh effects here, uh, which you can of course duplicate and make a bit bigger if you want to have some of them bigger than other ones. Okay, if you want to create a sense of motion, what you can do is, I'll duplicate one of the, no, not that one, this one one of the less blurred uh, layers here and I'll move it around a bit and what I will do is press Control command T to load this free transform tool and I'll right click and choose warp and from here if you move this slightly you don't have to make big changes just just a bit 
like that you can create a sense of motion make them look like they're falling okay press enter and if you zoom in you can see how they are um, it looks like they're actually moving let's do it again let's warp them a bit more stretch them a bit so that it looks like they're falling from left to right maybe or no from right to left you can also apply motion blur if you want. Okay, see how it looks like. Maybe I want to blur it a bit more. So let's apply some more Gaussian blur to these ones. Yeah, like that. Great, and now I'll duplicate the first one and I'll make it bigger. I want to have some bigger snowflakes, but not very blurred that and duplicate again move them around so you can see with layering you can get lots of cool effects and with just one layer I just apply that noise filter once you can do it multiple times if you want but it's not necessary simply by duplicating and moving layers around you can get uh, you can get what you want and it's enough I think Okay, I think I have enough uh, snow here on this image. Um, probably I would duplicate one of the of this bokeh effects here and leave it like that. Keep the face fairly clean. You don't want to cover it too much. Yeah, this one is it's bothering me. I don't like it, so I'll deleted okay great now if you want to emphasize this a bit more you can create a new layer and with a big brush you can paint with white a glow of light let's use a soft brush and a really big brush like that and I'll click once right here like so and now with the well actually let's move it a bit higher up like that and now with the control command T I'll make this bigger and I'll move it around like that. Just to add this touch of light there on the image and get this look. Okay, and um, that's pretty much it uh, before and after. I think it looks quite nice. If you want, uh, you can add more effects. Let's add, for example, a, a photo filter and let's make it a bit colder. Not that much. And that looks okay. And now maybe some vibrance. I want to get back some of the color. Yeah, I think this looks nice. Yep, yeah, maybe a gradient map. And let's change this to tone, to hue, sorry. And uh, let's see if we drop the opacity to about 10%, just to get a different touch, 15. See on the face and on the hair. And that's pretty much it. The effect of before and after before and after so that's that's the effect that I wanted to show you I hope you liked it and so that's that's all for today I hope you'll get some nice results if you want you can uh, use the hashtag PSD box or, or PSD underscore box on Instagram and or post them on our Facebook page and show us what you get until next time this is Andre from PSD box take care and see you on the next tutorial.